So when it comes to learning English, everybody is talking about shows and movies, but not a lot of people are actually talking about podcasts. Which I don't quite understand why, because podcasts are great. You can listen to almost any kind of topics, ranging from everyday nonsense like in the filthy, dirty toilet, do you sit down or do you squat? You can find answers in podcasts. On the other hand, there are also more serious podcasts exploring the meaning in our life. How can we be happy? You can listen to them anytime, anywhere, at workplace, when you are taking it down, or while enjoying the excitements and thrills. Or maybe you could acquire insights and wisdom, like reading a book. That's great, but only if you can find the right podcasts to listen to. So here are three of my favorite shows. On the top of my list, I have The Truth. So the best way to describe the truth is. It makes movies for years, short stories that are sometimes dark, sometimes funny, and always intriguing. Each story is different and usually 10 to 20 minutes long. It takes you to unexpected places using only sound. Obviously, I'm just reading out the about us page on the web, but every word is true. I listened to one episode and I couldn't stop. And I highly recommend you guys to listen to the first episode called "I'm Not This Guy." It's a story about two guys switch body, one taking advantage of the other, who tries to get his body back. But believe me, it's hundred times more interesting than what I just described. Have on the second of our list, we have a startup. So if you are big into podcasts, you're probably already very familiar with Alice Bloomberg. He's mostly well known for his work with this American Life Money Planet. Anything involves Alice Bloomberg is great, and startup is just no exception. He documents his journey of starting his own company, Gimlet, in startup season one. You may think I'm not into business, I'm not into startup. This is not for me. But believe me, give it a go. It'll capture you. You find yourself resonating with him on his epic fail in the beginning, applauding for him when he's overcoming all the difficulties in the middle, and you probably feel happy for him at the end as he made it. It's a story about uncertainty of the future, the excitement of a transformation. It's something that we could all relate to, no matter who we are, what we do. It's a great show. But with this being said, I actually personally prefer season two. Features a dating app company called Dating Ring. Why? You have to find out yourself. So the last general list is the Tim Ferriss show. It's a very special show for me, an interview show. So basically, Tim Ferriss is showing questions to his guests. And the guest answers all those questions. It's special in the sense that I often find myself listening to the show and up wanting more from the guest. Most of the guests were on the show to promote books or something like that. So I will go ahead and buy the books from those guests and start reading. So that's where reading starts for me. Reading is definitely one of the best things that happened for me. So that's why it is so special for me. And I recommend two particular episodes for you guys. The first one features Naval Ravikant. He talks about deep stuff, the meaning of our life. How can we get rich without getting lucky? The ideas and the way that Naval expresses them is so beautiful. It's so elegant. It makes you wonder, like, how could someone have such great ideas and express it in such a way? You probably end up wanting more from Naval, like I did. Another episode I would recommend you guys features Shao Bo. So he talks about his journey from. Coming from a poor family in China to being admitted to Harvard University in the 90s, it's a great show for parents because it talks about parenting. It is also a great show for students, especially those who are studying overseas from China. Many of the things he talks about, you find yourself relate to it, and it's also a great show for people who want to get to know China a little bit. He also shared about his stories of learning English, even though I don't really quite agree on his method and approach. But you could find out yourself. Yeah, so those are two episodes that I listened to more than once. But I'm pretty sure there are a lot more podcasts, great podcasts out there that you could listen to. But what I find interesting, you may not. So instead of throwing in more podcasts that you may never listen to, I think it's better that we can switch gear and talk about some things that we may need to keep in mind when we are using podcasts as a way to improve our English. So for me, it is very important to understand listening to podcasts. It's no substitution for all the other work that we have to do. We still have to read. We still have to speak. We still need to put in the effort to do whatever is required to improve our English. So I do not really expect gigantic, huge progress from merely listening to podcasts. 
I actually have very low expectations from it. So if I do improve, I'm glad. But if I don't, I'm okay with that. So what I'm expecting from podcasts is really re-encountering, coming across phrases and language that I picked up from somewhere else. I often have, you know, moments like that. Oh, this is a phrase that I heard somewhere else. Oh, this is a phrase that I read on a book. So I think podcast is not a great place to learn language in the first place. It's a great place for you to keep yourself being exposed to those phrases and language over and over again. That's what it's good at. So for me, what's important is really to make sure what I'm listening to is appealing, intriguing, and fun to me. It will leave me wanting more. So I can be sure that I would definitely go back to it, listen to it almost every day. That's very important because at the end of the day, it's really about how much exposure you can get, how often you use English. Can you do it every single day? Can you do it on a consistent basis? That's what matters. I see podcast as a form of entertainment, a place where I can get new ideas, be inspired, maybe just laugh a little bit if I'm listening to something that's funny. And I find myself thinking about and talking about those ideas from podcasts, which actually helped with my English a lot more. This is just me. Yeah, I love podcasts. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. My name is Kevin. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.